morning and welcome to this uh, quick introduction for this week's uh, uh, content. Again, this is for astronomy and this is for week 12. And uh, let me share the screen. So basically, this is the unit. It's covering basically, uh, this is the week, I'm sorry, it's covering three units and they all deal with the sun. So uh, this is our first basically uh, step outside, if you wish, of the solar system, albeit we're starting with the sun, which is part of the solar system. But we're setting it as a step into the uh, stars, into the galaxies, into the black holes, into also the neutron stars, and what is out there, uh, out there outside of the solar system. So this is the uh, first uh, jump into that. We have a homework this week, which I'm going to dedicate a whole session on it, maybe on Wednesday. And I'm going to send messages to everybody so that if you want to attend the live session, again, it's gonna be a brief discussion of the homework. There are six problems in the homework that we're going to discuss. There is a survey that I want you guys to fill, basically to tell me how we're, going, how we're doing in this class. And this survey is an anonymous survey. So we're, uh, please feel free to uh, put your true opinion into how we make it uh, better. Anyway, so this is basically the entire discussion in here. The prompt for the discussion this week is slightly different. The prompt is actually inside the, the, the discussion, so it's not in the video. So if I click on it, there are some embedded videos already. But the discussion in here, the prompt is just to summarize the key concepts from this week. So let me jump into some of the ideas from this week. So let me go back into, what is it, go back. And uh, so let's look at week 12 in terms of the objectives again, uh, just briefly. The objectives are very, again, you have the fourth and the final basically observation from the lunar project. So please take care of it. It's going to be this Thursday, not for not Wednesday. I know we've been doing it on Wednesdays in the past, but this time around, it's going to be this Thursday or November 4th. You have a homework, like I said before, that is from this week. And you also have the discussions. Actually, there is another discussion from the previous week that uh, we need to pay attention to. And we have the survey that I mentioned before. These, these are the objectives that we're going to tackle quickly. So I'm going to jump into that. So again, the entire topic deals with the sun, how it looks like, its structure, and uh, its uh, the way it is it presents itself. I mean, the theory that uh, how come the sun does not collapse given its own sheer mass because the mass of the sun is a huge and the force of the gravity should really collapse it on itself. But there is also, don't forget that there is an internal pressure due to the, uh, to the, to the particles moving around. So that is actually from the ideal gas law, the pressure is proportional to the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the higher the pressure. Okay, so there is a balance between these two forces, the force of gravity and the force of, of this pressure. Obviously, the, 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 the deeper you go into the sun, the, the higher the temperature, the higher the pressure, but then also the higher the gravity because more and more mass is pushing against the, that point. So that's basically how, why the sun uh, has this shape. If somehow the temperature increases in the, in the sun for some reason, if the temperature increases uh, high enough in the, the, because of the collapse for, uh, from the sun, because of the force of gravity trying to uh, push down, which means that the, gravity for the, the temperature increases. In this case, the rate of the nuclear reactions happening in the core of the sun increases, and that balances that force of gravity that keeps its, uh, its uh, uh, to, uh, that, per, that increases its temperature. So in other words, this is a way also of controlling the, temper, the temperature of the sun. So this is in a sense, the, the thermostat of the sun. So, and that is the balance between these two antagonist forces, two contradictory forces. In terms of the structure of the sun, it's, it has this core, this is extremely high temperature of the order of 15 million Kelvin. That's where the nuclear reactions uh, happen. That's where the sun gets its energy from, it's in the core. Then you have a radiation zone in here, where the, uh, uh, the light is basically emitted in all directions and energy is dissipated in this fashion, the heat is dissipated in this fashion. And then there is a convection zone in the sun. And on top of that, at the end, there is the, this, this outer layer. And then at the end, there is a corona 
which is the what we see, which is this, this visible say, the thing from the sun. How do we know all of this? First of all, studying basically the sun quakes gives us an idea into how the structure is. That's just stuff we did for the earth, basically, in a sense. And also the computer models. So those are two key concepts to help us understand of what's going on inside the sun and how it's made up of. Again, you're encouraged to go through the reading. Again, this is a summary. And uh, uh, the branch of science that studies uh, sun quakes is called helioseismology. So in a sense, similar to uh, seism seismology here on earth. Uh, and again, computer models. Again, you're urged to read through the chapter because uh, you're going to be quizzed on it. You're going to be assessed on it. So you really need to make sure you go thoroughly on all of this. And probably I will come later on to tackle a few points independently. Anyway, so this is just a brief introduction of the entire concept. The sun in terms of its surface has a lot of activity. One of the key things in here is this coronal ejections, CMEs, uh, coronal mass ejections. And, uh, and it has this sh shape for the most part. Sometimes there is actually a solar flares that leave the entire sun and come all the way to the earth and actually go beyond. And uh, this is governed by the magnetic field of the sun. And the magnetic field is due to the fact that you have charges because again, the temperatures are so high that you have ions moving every which way. So that creates tremendous currents. And those currents create magnetic fields, north and south pole. And this is the field lines basically as they're emerging from one pole to the other. Uh, in terms of how the energy gets, how the sun gets its energy, it's basically due to uh, converting mass into, into energy by the mass energy equivalence formula of Mr. Einstein. So this is actually a nuclear reaction, that's all. And the nuclear reaction really ha what happened is that it diffuses four hydrogens, six hydrogens to count them. To specifically, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. And at the end of the day, we will get two hydrogen out. So the two hydrogen, so in, in other words, you can say that there is a net four uh, protons come in, four hydrogen atoms come in, four hydrogen nuclei come in. And then uh, uh, one helium atom comes out of the whole process, OK? Because, yes, six are coming. But two of them also are coming out. So the net reaction at the end is that you have four hydrogen uh, uh, nuclei, and at the end, one nucleus of the helium, uh, uh, basically the helium atom. So that is basically in a nutshell what the reaction is. Step by step, there is the first step in here, which is really very highly unlikely process, but it happens nonetheless. And this is really what triggers the whole process. Two hydrogen atoms fuse to form a heavy, uh, the heavy hydrogen, which is called deuterium, uh, plus a positron, which is a positively charged electron, plus a neutrino. This is, a, uh, this is governed by the weak force. This is an extremely rare event. If it was any more uh, common than what it is now, the sun would have burned out a long, long time ago. If it was any slower than what it is now, the sun would have never probably emitted light whatsoever. So it would have stayed dark. So this is really the, the one that starts it all. With the presence of the deuterium now and the presence of the hydrogen, this is an easy reaction. This is actually happens very quickly. This is a nuclear fusion of these two elements to form uh, helium plus emission of energy. Gamma in this case is a gamma rays, which is just part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we saw before. And then you have two isotopes of helium. These are isotopes of helium that are rare, helium-3, that combine to form the normal helium plus they emit uh, also uh, protons. Again, you have one, two, three. But remember, you need two, uh, two times this three, so it's for six. And at the end, you will end up with this basically outcome. The energy is coming from here and also from here. That is where the sun gets in uh, the, the energy, the, the, the way it shines. It's coming from these processes. At the end of the day, this is basically the whole process that governs the nuclear reaction. How do we know all of this? One of the telltales is this neutrinos, because what happened in the core of the sun is so deep that we cannot see. So if we know, if we can detect these neutrinos and detect the right amount of them that are coming from the sun, then we know this re nuclear reaction is, uh, is true. The model is correct. And that's exactly what we did. 
except that there was an initial hiccup in a sense that initially we did not really count exactly this number of neutrinos given the how much uh, luminosity the sun gives we found the third of what we really should find it turns out this neutrino, which is called an electron neutrino, that's why it has the E inside of it, is one of the three flavors of neutrinos. There is a muon neutrino and there is a tau neutrinos, and this is just another one. So we detected a th the one third because this neutrino decays into the other two. So when we did refine this experiment further, we found the actual number is matching this theory. So the theory predicted a certain amount and we detected them. It's very hard to detect neutrinos. You really have to count on the extremely fast ones to trigger, uh, because neutrinos are, uh, they don't interact with gravity. They don't interact with the electromagnetic field. That's why basically they are extremely rare events to detect them, but they were detected nonetheless. So this is how we know that this model is correct. Again, this is a brief introduction. This is one of the things you look for when you're trying to understand what's going on with the sun. Okay, and during assessments and so on and so forth. The four forces are involved. Force of gravity puts everything together, closer and closer together, which raises the temperature higher and higher. And that means the, 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 the protons are moving super fast, but the, for, the electrostatic force, Coulomb's force, prevent them from colliding because two protons are positively charged, so they cannot come any closer. But rarely when they're close enough, the weak force changes one of those uh, uh, protons into a neutron, and then the neutron and the proton fuse to form the heavy uh, heavy hydrogen. That's basically the three forces so far involved, including nuclear force at the end. So the four forces are actually involved at this point. Then the nuclear force later on with the force of gravity will pull those things together again, the same process. And now they have the nuclear force to form the uh, helium-3 and then helium-3 and helium-3 fuse again through the nuclear force and the uh, uh, gravity pull them together. Electrostatic does not want them anywhere near, but they are, in this case, a nuclear force is so strong to fuse them. This is a very rare event. This is actually happens once in a billion years or so. But given the sheer amount of protons in the sun, that is enough for it to stay lit for this many billions of years and billions to come. Uh, the next processes are extremely fast. And so that's basically why this is a, uh, this all the forces involved in here. Part of the things that is also, again, I didn't mention about this, the outer part of the sun is part of its structure is the sunspots. And the sunspots are again, uh, 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 regions where the magnetic field actually twists on itself. The field lines twist and they form points on the sun and those, their temperature starts to decrease a little versus their surface of the sun. This is one of the homework problems that we're gonna be working on. Okay, and again, I mentioned the magnetic field, the fact that you have fast moving charges, and this is the fact that the temperature drops a little bit in these points, and they're actually looking a little bit darker than the rest of the sun, and that's where the sunspots are. Uh, the sunspots themselves, they have a periodic, their, their number increases periodically and decreases on a periodic basis. And this is a typical behavior of the sun. We are in the 20, uh, 2021, we are in the low uh, number of sunspots at this point in the time. And this is a cyclic event. Apparently there is a correlation between the weather on the earth and the sunspots, the number of the sunspots on the sun. Up to the 1980s, there is a connection, a straight line between the two. But then after that, the, the, sea, the surface temperature, the weather in here, or at least the, 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 the temperature on Earth increased, although the number of the sunspot decreased. So it seems like there is a lack of correlation recently, but this only probably is a false, uh, false sense of security because of the fact that probably had the sunspots kept on increasing, this temperature would have kept on increasing too. So the thing even more so than what it is. So in other words, the rise in temperature on the earth could have been drastically worse and probably is going to be worse in the next decades or so because of the activity of the sun. Again, this is a brief introduction. I'm going to post this recording later on for you guys, but I'm going to come back in small chunks because one of the suggestions that some of you suggested is to keep the recording shorter. So I'm going to stop the recording right now and I'm going to post this one. And later on, I'm going to go through some special points for this entire class. Thank you.